So, have you been spending countless hours in Photoshop, but you are not getting the results that you want? The problem might not be your skills, but your approach to Photoshop. Hi, I'm Nakristos, and in this channel, I help graphic designers go from beginner to professional, and I help you to transform your graphic design journey. So, in this video, I'll be revealing five mistakes that beginners and maybe some professionals make in photoshop and how you can skip past those hurdles to design like a pro in photoshop now if you are new to this channel kindly leave a sub and if you are a returning subscriber or viewer kindly like this video and also share it to other people so that youtube algorithm is going to show this video to other people out there and without further ado let's get into the video all right so one of the first mistakes i see people do a lot in photoshop is not using keyboard shortcuts now what are keyboard shortcuts keyboard shortcuts are a way of making sure that you like is in the word shortcuts and they are found on your keyboard so instead of you going through the route of coming here to filter and then you come here these stops right here are called keyboard shortcuts alt shift ctrl a shift ctrl a shift ctrl r shift ctrl x alt ctrl v now they are called keyboard shortcuts now you can actually make your own set of keyboard shortcuts or if you want to see all the list of keyboard shortcuts in photoshop just go over to edit and go back to keyboard shortcuts here and you can tap on it uh, i want to open something here so that every shortcut i open here you are going to see it don't worry about that though so here are keyboard shortcuts and here are shortcuts for application menus so if you go on that application menus you are going to see shortcuts on application menus so you are going to see shortcuts on application menus like this ctrl n ctrl zero and all this stuff so uh i created one for creating smart filters i think under filter if i go under filter and convert for smart filters so this is the one i created ctrl plus full stop now before i cleared my photoshop i created one also ctrl plus ctrl shift ctrl plus shift plus full stop i used it to convert uh, to raster image i don't know to convert to raster image okay so uh let's say i want to create a new shortcut i'm going to come back to filter gallery and then i hit ctrl shift and full stop now you can see this um, um shortcut has not been used by another um another action now if i want to create one and i use this ctrl shift a which is for camera raw filter ctrl shift a they are going to tell you ctrl plus shift a is already in use and will be removed from filter so if i tap ok they are going to remove it from camera raw filter and it will, be, it will be added to this place so i just want to use ctrl shift and full stop and then i tap on ok that's for filter gallery so when i create a new uh documents and or let's say i create a new text layer so i want to write uh filter so i just let me just that font for you so and i scale this up so i i want to convert this to a smart object so i hit control and um control and uh full stop then i want to stamp this layer so i hit control shift alt e to create a layer stamp which is this here yeah. and i want to convert it to a smart object so i hit ctrl this and i want to take it to filter gallery so i hit ctrl shift and and full stop to go into the filter gallery you should open yeah so filter gallery has opened so if i want to add some filters to this i'm ready in the filter gallery um workspace and you can see some of the effects that has been added already from the filter gallery which you can use uh, on your project so there are many I, I like to use and you can use as well, like this one. So, so that's just it about uh, creating and using keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop. Alright, so the next um, mistake I see some people do is not converting their layers to smart object. Now this can really be a lot of work and um, you need to convert your layers to smart objects so that you can make them non-destructive so that you, if you want to go back to um will i say if you want to go back to the edit to correct one or two things you can be able to do that easily so uh it takes like this 
or yeah a text like this or let me use another one so i i want to i want to okay this one already i i i stamped it so it doesn't it's not a smart object anymore so i want to open a file or let me just open a file for you so that i'll show you so i open this file and then uh supposing i didn't convert uh let me see this or the image itself to a smart object this image of steve jobs to a smart object if i want to go back to the edit i made here look at the original picture and i can just come here and use my eraser tool and then ctrl s ctrl w and if i go back you can see that the edit has been added you can see it now if i didn't create a smart object of, of this image if i duplicate this layer and then i convert it back to a raster layer and let me just apply this layer mask now if this is how the main image is i did not do anything to it so this is the image and let's say i i use the eraser tool and then i clean some part of it and everything i cannot go back to the layer and if i add a filter gallery or a filter camera roll filter or any filter to this um to this um, image i cannot go back and edit it because the layer is now destructive so that's one of the usefulness of creating or converting your layers to smart object because you can easily go back to them and transform anything that you want to do with them all right another mistake i see beginners make in photoshop is using the eraser tool instead of the layer mask tool now if you have a shape or an image and uh okay let me use a shape so you have a shape and then you want to clean some part of the shape let's say the shape was originally a raster image so let's say it was originally a raster image or oh, let me just bring in a picture for you i come back to pictures and then i bring in a picture so let me bring a picture that we we'll use okay so um here okay let me bring in this picture here so uh yeah so if this image was a raster image and then as a designer you might want to um clear some parts of the and everything and then instead of you to use a layer mask you're using a you're using a the eraser to to clean some parts of the image that you want just like this you see that you are going to make a lot of mistakes and even though you didn't do it like this you might you might come here and then you tap remove background and you use remove background but you didn't um you didn't convert your image to a smart object you are still going to have the same uh consequence because uh you cannot go back to it you cannot go back to it so let's say after creating this uh you after doing this like this after removing the background and everything you might now create some edit let me let me still apply this layer mask if i apply this layer mask now or yeah let me apply the layer mask look at you you cannot restore the background or anything i want to do again because you do not convert to smart objects so converting to smart objects is the best way even though you did not convert it at the beginning you can convert it to a smart object here like this and then you can work with your image like this you can still double click and you can go back to this place and you can see that the background is still there and everything so yeah so one of the fifth mistake i see beginners make is not creating text box so they just come and then they choose their font and after choosing their font they they just come and and, and write something like this beginner mistakes that people make in photoshop so uh instead of doing something like this and writing on a straight line and then you now start coming to break it and to break the text to break the text so that 
uh, they align like this instead of doing all those hard work it's better you create a text box so here's what i mean so if you copy this text if i do ctrl c or ctrl x and coming back to the text too instead of writing it plainly like that you have to create a text box like this and then after creating your text box you hit ctrl v and then you paste your text inside now once you paste your text inside you can now edit your text and do what you want to do you can edit the text edit the kerning and a whole lot on your on your text so that uh you don't have to be manually breaking the text and and, and putting enter and, and all those things so once you have your text like this you can see that it's it's okay like this and okay i'm not done i'll still reduce the leading like this so you can see how it's better than this one that we just did like this and it's now left for us to be uh doing enter and enter by ourselves because if you're working on a very large text or a large document you see that it's not going to be easy for you to create something like that now I, there's okay i did this um design and then i use text box to create it after using um after using my selection tool to create a selection around this image I now use my text box to create a text box where all this text can sit perfectly if you want a tutorial on this video kindly let me know in the comment section and in my next video i'll do a tutorial on this image or on this design i created so uh yeah so that's what text box does for you and most times when you create a text box uh you are left with the lorem e spoon like this so if you reduce the size you see lorem e spoon blah 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 inside and you can see how it is automatically breaking the text like this for you so that will be all for today's video if you found this video helpful kindly leave a like and subscribe if you haven't and um, i'm going to see you in the next video so till then stay safe and keep creating